Good morning and welcome to worship. I welcome all of you who are here in the sanctuary with us and I welcome all of you who are at home joining in with us. We know that wherever we are, God is meeting with us. I would like to point out the beautiful flowers on the altar. Uh, they are from Harry Verdeer's memorial service which was held here yesterday. And so as we prepare our hearts for worship, we will be uh, listening to our singers lead us in Come Now is the time to worship. And for those of you are at, who are at home, I expect you to be singing with gusto, or as John Wesley said, lustily. And for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, I'd like to remind you of a little story I heard about a little boy who was a bit rambunctious, and he was told he had to sit down. So reluctantly, he did so. But then he said, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. So you guys may not be able to sing on the outside, but I'm expecting you to be singing on the inside. As we come now is the time to worship.
Good morning. Let us share together now in our call to worship as you see it up on the screen. Friends, let us worship God today, for God is great. Let us worship God today, for God is good. Let us worship God today because we are God's people. Let us worship God. Remain seated and let us share our faith with the affirmation of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge, the quick, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let me share the New Testament lesson taken from the book of Philippians. As many of you know, Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. He says this, Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the world. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Little legs, they had not changed 
a sweet peace fills the air. I walk today where Jesus walked and felt his presence there. My pathway led through Thank you, Ralph, and all the quartet today, and Brian. Let us look to God in prayer. Lord, we come into your presence today, asking you to be with us as we struggle in these difficult times of the pandemic. We ask you to give insight and understanding to the drug manufacturers, the researchers, the scientists who are feverishly at work throughout the world trying to come up with what we call vaccine to begin to overwhelm this COVID-19. Be with them, Lord, as they struggle and spend many hours in their laboratories testing and Lord, I ask you to be at those people who are willing to come and be what we sometimes call guinea pigs in order to go through the trials. God bless them and be with them. Lord, we ask you this day to especially bless and walk alongside our medical personnel our nurses, our doctors, and all those who have other positions in the hospitals who are dealing with this COVID-19 day by day by day. Be with them as they sit at the bedside of those who are struggling and may not make it. And be with them as they rejoice in those who are able to come through and go back home again. 
We ask you to be with families throughout the world, families who have seen a healthy loved one be stricken with this virus and no longer be with them. Minister to them in their grief and in the difficulty of adjusting. Lord, we also ask you to be with the so-called second line of defense, our EMTs, our ambulance drivers, our firemen, our police, who are out there trying to help in whatever ways they can. And so, Lord, they need your strength as they go forth day by day for us. And Lord, help our nation. We implore you to be with those who we have elected in our House of Representatives, our Senate, and the White House. We ask you that somehow that you may be able to get them to stop screaming and yelling at each other. Help them to realize they work for us and that they need to do those things which bring our nation together. Lord, help us as your children to be grateful for what you have given us, to help us to see that light at the end of the tunnel. We know there is frustration everywhere, frustration from people who are tired of being locked in, children who are frustrated because they can't play with their classmates and their friends where they live, frustration because we cannot gather with friends or go to restaurants, frustrations that we have to make reservations for church or in many cases cannot attend worship. Give us patience, Lord. Give us patience and help us to walk as your servants, sharing your love, your joy, and the opportunity that we may witness as your children to those who are hurting, those who are mourning, and those who have lost hope. May we be, as Paul said in our lesson, may we be those stars that are shining in the dark. So be with us, Lord, as we seek to be your faithful disciples through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will you please join me in a prayer of confession as we share together. Gracious Lord, you have done so much for us and we do so little in return. You ask for humility and we are often a proud people. You ask for willingness and we are often a stubborn people. You ask for repentance and we are often a deaf people. You ask for service and we are often a busy people. Gracious God, teach us obedience, grant us forgiveness, that we may be your willing servants for such a time as this. Amen. And now, as forgiven and reconciled children of God, you may share the peace of Christ with each other without touching. <laughs> It's a bit strange, isn't it? We have decided that once this pandemic is over, we are going to have a hugging party here at St. John's. 
We've now come to the time in our service where we want to give back to God just a small portion of what he's given to us. Uh, we are so grateful for all of our St. John's family who have continued to support us during this time. Uh, if you are here, uh, you can place your offering in the uh, plates that are at the exits. And if you are at home, we appreciate it. If you're sending your uh, offering in, or you can uh, text your giving or have automatic giving. But we thank you so much for all that you do for us here at St. John's. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that we can always trust in you. You're an abundant God, and because of your great love for us, you give us so much. And so today we bring to you our offerings, and with them we worship you, and we also give our whole selves to you. Please take our gifts and use them for your kingdom and for your glory. And may they be a great blessing to many. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now will you join with me as we pray in the words that our Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? O oh Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. 
Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Okay, I'd like to ask you a question. Have you ever faced a time in your life when your circumstances just seemed plain awful? Now, a lot of us would probably say that this pandemic is just plain awful. But maybe you're in a marriage where it seems like your spouse just doesn't care about you. Or maybe you face death in your family and you think, I just can't do this. Maybe you're in a financial hardship place that's really no fault of your own and you wonder, God, what are you doing here? I want to assure you that in the middle of the difficult circumstances, God's busy working behind the scenes and he wants to use you to do the extraordinary, even in the midst of your awful circumstances, even if you can't see him working. Now, we don't always see the hand of God when we're in the middle of our situations, but we must, we must learn to trust him and allow him to have his will performed through us so that we won't miss accomplishing the work he's called us to do for his kingdom. This morning, I want to talk about a woman named Esther. If you aren't familiar with this story from the Bible, I encourage you to read the book of Esther. It's only 10 chapters. You can read it in one setting. That's all you have to do. The story of Esther is the story of how God used one woman to save, save the Jews in her area. Esther's parents died when she was young, and she was adopted by her uncle, or some say her cousin, Mordecai. The current king, Xerxes, got rid of his wife for not coming when he called her, and so a search began for a new queen. Beautiful young women from all over the countryside were brought in to see if one might be suitable to the king for his new queen. Esther was chosen from among the girls as queen. And then the real drama began. A man named Haman, who was one of the king's trusted advisors, got angry, got angry at Mordecai because Mordecai refused to bow down to him like everyone had been ordered to do. So he came up with a plan to have Mordecai and all of the Jews killed. After hearing of this plan, Mordecai pleaded with Esther to go to the king and intercede for the Jews. I'll share a couple of verses from the book of Esther, and this is from the Message Bible. Mordecai sent her this message. Don't think that just because you live in the king's house, you're the one Jew who will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else. But you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen for just such a time as this. Now, one interesting note about this is that no one knew that Esther was a Jew. Plus, the king had not called for her for a month. And she knew that if she went into the king and he hadn't called for her, there was a possibility that she could be killed. So, as you can imagine, Esther wasn't really keen on Mordecai's plan. But then Mordecai went to her and he basically said, Look, Esther. God's going to deliver his people no matter what. But if you won't be part of the solution, you and me and all of our family are going to be wiped out. Then he said, have you ever considered that maybe you got to be queen so that God could use you to solve this very problem? Maybe you are here for such a time as this. Well, Esther went into the king and the Jews were saved and the one who wanted the Jews killed was himself ordered killed. Now, again, I encourage you to read the whole story. It's a really good story. Now, Esther, as a young girl, he, she was quite comfortable with her ordinary life. She didn't like the idea of being put into the light of a, the public life as queen. She would much rather have stayed at home and just been an ordinary girl. But God had a plan for her life. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I've often thought that it would be really helpful if God would simply send me a written copy of his plan for my life, like a detailed itinerary. Yeah. But after I thought about this a little bit more, I realized that it's probably better that he doesn't. I might just run and hide if I knew what he had in store for me. Now, often God puts his people into situations that they would have never chosen and from which they would gladly escape if possible. It's amazing how often God hems his people into the place he wants them to be, even if they don't want to be there. Think about Moses. God called Moses and, buddy, Moses argued with God every way he possibly could, but there was no way out for him. He had to go to Pharaoh and free his people. Or what about Jonah? Jonah ran the opposite way from God's call on his life, but it didn't do any good. God made him go anyhow, even if it was by the way of the belly of a fish. Wouldn't it have been a lot easier for Jonah if he had just obeyed in the first place? I believe that God will often call us to a place that we would never want to go or even think we could go on our own abilities. He sends us to places that if it were up to us, we'd rather run from. Now, does any of this sound familiar to you? Do you feel you're being pushed, dragged, or convinced to move on into unfamiliar territory? Is there a tug at your heart to do something different? Guys, the Christian walk is a walk of faith. God doesn't always reveal his perfect will and allow us to see the destiny that he has in place for us. He asks us to trust him and take a leap of faith. Then we can allow him to guide every step of ours until we come to the end. Now, I'm sure you've realized that often It's only when we've reached this milestone or accomplished a major goal that we can look back and see how God was leading us all along. Perhaps God's placed you in a job environment or a school environment or a family situation where you're overwhelmed. Perhaps you're questioning God. Why am I here? Can't I accomplish great things for your kingdom in some other place? Isn't there an easier, more positive place where I can do your work? Esther felt the same way. She didn't understand why God would allow her to be forced to marry a pagan king and be taken from her family to live in a palace where she felt felt more like a prisoner than a queen. And remember, according to the law, she couldn't even go into her husband, the king, without prior approval. If Esther attempted to walk into the presence of the king without permission and he didn't want to see her, she would be instantly killed. So Esther had to make a choice. And just like Esther, we have a choice. God doesn't force us to do anything because this is a volunteer army. At any time we want, we can turn away from the place where God has us and do whatever we want to do but there will be consequences to our disobedience. God doesn't allow anything in our lives by accident. Every circumstance we face is there for a greater purpose, a greater purpose than we can see right at the moment. So, your job is negative. It's too time demanding, not exactly what you think it ought to be. So what? There are no perfect jobs out there. Every one of us must learn to listen to God and make the best of whatever situation we find ourselves in. Abraham Lincoln said, A man is about as happy as he makes up his mind to be. I like that. You determine your own happiness by your own attitude. Don't allow your circumstances to steal your joy. I know life can be unfair. Life is hard at times, and I know often we can't see the forest for the trees. But we must learn to trust God to bring into our path the things that he wills for our life. And then we must ask him 
to help us to be victorious in whatever circumstances may come. God may have some of you in unpleasant, jo in un unpleasant job situations, so just let your light shine. You might just be the only light in that dark place. You have the message of hope that no one else may have, so don't join in with the rest of the grumbling and complaining. Have faith in God. Trust him and let your life be a witness. God may have some of you in troublesome home environments with unsaved parents or unsaved spouses. Live for Jesus anyway. He's promised to let all things work out for your good. And that little phrase, all things, that covers a lot of ground. Your trust in God and your commitment to Christ may be the only chance your family will ever have to see what the love of God is really about. Let your light shine. Even if your family members never change, your duty is to live for God and love them anyway. Who you are does not depend upon your circumstances. It's your circumstances that reveal who you really are. Maybe you feel like you're in some pretty awful circumstances right now, and you may feel there's no hope. But I want to encourage you today and let you know there is hope. There is hope that even in a situation that seems beyond being able to be used, God wants to use you. The question is, will you live your life so that you are able to experience the joy that comes with being used in an extraordinary way? St. John's is a congregation with resources, and you hold positions of authority in the church and in the community. The message of Scripture all the way from Genesis to Revelation is that the resources you have are not your own, not a dime in your pocket, not the job you hold, not the spouse you married, not the children you have, not even the breath that comes from your body belongs to you. All of it belongs to God. We're not owners, we're stewards of all the things we call ours. And it doesn't matter if we are 12 years old or 112 years old. God can use our circumstances to further his kingdom, if we're willing. So have we missed God because we couldn't trust him in our job, so we just walked away, only to realize later what a big mistake that was? Have we left the place where we were for greener pastures, only to find the pastures weren't any greener where we went? Have we rebelled in our circumstances and found that we missed God's best because we didn't see it through to the end? When we face the difficulties, the hardships and the unfairness of life, let's not miss God by running away. Face your fears head on. Take that leap of faith. Trust in the Lord to guide your steps, and he will see you through it all. Perhaps, like Queen Esther, you have been brought to this place in your life, this place of loneliness, this place of fear, of uncertainty, of doubt, of indecision, this place of questioning God, maybe you're here for a purpose. Obedience to God can cure the fears, remove the doubts, get rid of uncertainty, cure indecision, remove loneliness, and answer questions. Step out by faith and watch God perform his work through you. For such a time as this, God has brought you to where you are now. For such a time as this, there are people in your workplace who need to know God. For such a time as this, there are people in your family who do not know God and need your witness. For such a time as this, God is calling men, women, and young people, all of his people, to work in and for the kingdom of God. Let's learn this lesson, brothers and sisters. Our God is the God of all. He's able to place his people wherever and whenever he wants them in order that they may serve his good purposes and bring him glory. If you love his son and if you seek sincerely to follow him, you can be sure God has you right where he wants you to be. 
He has you where you will best serve his call. Brothers and sisters, God has a purpose for your life. Put your trust in him. Let go and let God use you to bless others. Who knows? You may have been placed right here for such a time as this. Amen. Just a reminder that following the benediction, you will be dismissed from the back to the front at the usher's instructions. You are where you are for such a time as this. So trust God, obey him, and give him the glory. Amen. <laughs>